Joining us now is Leo Kaloa Matani, an offensive lineman for the New York Jets and the creator of the Hawaii Towards Zero website, geared towards helping the residents of the state coping with the ongoing outbreak. So, Leo, I really appreciate you coming on today. I first want to ask, you're, of course, from Hawaii. It has a special place in your heart. What is the outbreak doing right now for a lot of residents on, uh, throughout the state? You know, I will say that we're lucky enough to say that the outbreak hasn't really affected the island as much as it has other primary areas within, within America. But... Uh, what you will know right away is that uh, Hawaii is very dependent on the tourism industry. It's had a huge effect on everyone's jobs. The, the effect that coronavirus and COVID-19 has you know, really had a universal uh, effect on, on the world in general. But spe specifically in Hawaii, I think they've been hit uh, primarily within their job industry. So uh, what we're doing now is just hoping to, to you know, provide aid and support as immediately as possible. I think that's very well said because sometimes when you just look at numbers, you forget that there are people behind those numbers. So when you say that the tourism industry is very much so affected, that means a lot of people aren't working at the moment. So even though there may not be a lot of cases or a lot of deaths, that's still people going through a time of uncertainty without paychecks, not knowing how they're going to make rent next month. Concerns like that, which don't appear in statistics. But what you're doing right now is something to make sure that the outbreak doesn't get out of control in Hawaii. Can you speak a little bit about the program that you started? Yeah, so Hawaii Towards Zero was started by myself and two other partners who are both local and from Hawaii. Uh, what we launched with uh, about two weeks ago was the ability to record and, and uh, log uh, your symptoms and provide those uh, those statistics to the government. Beyond that, we provided a resource center for all of the users and uh, residents in Hawaii. And then last week, we launched a, uh, a call center uh, that was manned by 12 uh, volunteer doctors and nurses so that those who didn't have immediate access to hospitals could uh, at least call in and be attended to by a medical professional. And that's so important during this time, too, because we've all heard it before that you can be carrying coronavirus without showing symptoms just yet, so meaning you could be spreading it to other people. That's why the social distancing measures went into place to prevent that from happening. But it's also important, too, because right now, if people have different uh, illnesses, whatever they may be, they don't know if they have coronavirus. They don't know if maybe they just have a cold, flu, something like that. And they, that it plays a big role in determining whether or not you go to the hospital, because you don't want to go to the hospital if you do have coronavirus and then risk spreading it to other people. You want to either be able to treat it at home, if possible, through isolation, or meet with a medical professional in order to get that. So I think it's a very important thing that you're doing right now. Have you seen any success or heard any success stories from people regarding your program? Yeah, and, and I will go ahead and say that the people of Hawaii, the small businesses, the other initiatives, they've done a, an amazing job at reaching out, partnering, coming together, uh, really just making this a collective effort to go ahead and provide a better times for Hawaii. For example, we went ahead and partnered with Ace Hardware, and we are now facilitating a, what we call shopping etiquette. Um, in in complement to what uh, the local government has done in mandating masks, we're going to go ahead and install portable sinks and hand washing stations at every major retailer um, in all of Hawaii. And we, we believe that's huge, right? Because there's a psychological piece along with the physical piece that comes to, you know, overcoming this virus, overcoming the outbreak and ensuring that we get back to what we were, um, uh, uh, you know, before. And obviously it'll be a different normal, but as soon as, you know, the faster we can get there, the better. And there is going to be a different normal. After coming out of this, people may be a little more hesitant to shake hands or hug the same way that they used to, which might be hard for uh, the state of Hawaii. I know that Hawaii is very much so a close community. The entire United States is, but especially in Hawaii. It means a little bit something extra there. There's a sense of communitarianism, everyone looking out for each other, a little bit more so than maybe you'll see in other states. Did that play a role at all in your decision to step back from what you're doing right now? I mean, you don't need the money or anything like that. You're uh, a very successful athlete. You have your own stuff going on. You didn't have to do this. But what fueled the decision for you to get involved in your state? You know, I think the outbreak in general, uh, I think it should have been a message to the leaders in the community to step up and be bold, right? If there's a time to do so, it's now. Uh, the world in general needs us, right? It needs people to go ahead and lead initiatives, uh, provide these collective efforts that will unify us, bring us together, and overcome something as huge as this, right? So uh, definitely a huge piece as to why I reached back to Hawaii. Hawaii has had a huge impact on my life has been there for me in one of my, you know, some of the most uh, growing moments in all of all of my existence. So, you know, this small token is a small way of giving back more than anything. I think it's just a, a huge opportunity for everyone in the community to come together, uh, you know, in one in one in one one message and, and overcome what we're, what we're going through at this point.
And we were mentioning the idea of community too, not only what it's done for you, but what it means for other citizens of the state. Uh, coming out of this crisis, uh, we said that it's going to be different uh, coming out of this as well. Uh, life will probably never be the same for many people. But for the short term, what are you hoping to do with this program? Is it to incentivize people to do their parts to, as you were saying, record their symptoms, reach out to the government, kind of put together a coordinated response as well as with those uh, small businesses that you were talking about. Is that kind of fueling your desire of what happens right now? Very much so. And what you're seeing now is you have the medical community, you know, putting a huge emphasis on the reporting and, and logging of what the actual health status of America is. You have other efforts and initiatives that are providing these preventative efforts, preventative approaches. What we're looking to do is be as proactive as possible. So we want to change the narrative, right? If you were to turn on any news network right now, uh, guarantee they're talking about how negative in times we are at this point, right? And something like facilitating the the installment of portable sinks, we believe it's something proactive. We believe it's one step closer to what our new normal will be. That's what we want to, that's what, that's what we're pushing for, right? Rather than you know, facilitate these other efforts that are just as important, don't get me wrong, we want to go ahead and get us to that normal. Let, let, let's put our communities in what will now be the future of our, of our lifestyles, right? Portable sinks, washing your hands throughout the day, masks, you know, social distancing, being aware of where you are, who you are in these, you know, widely crowded areas. And, and that's something that we want to facilitate now. We want to go ahead and change the narrative, become that productive, uh, proactive uh, movement. And uh, that's something that we're starting with in Hawaii and hoping that other states adopt and, you know, gradually get, get towards what we're looking to and what we would deem as zero. Right. And so that's yeah. what Hawaii Toward Zero is. I think that's beautifully said. I mean, to your point, you can find a lot of negative news stories when it comes to the coronavirus. It is a very negative type of story inherently, but it's good to find the silver linings in here, such as what you're doing right now. And I can't thank you enough for what you're doing to help the people of your home state and also for coming on the show tonight and educating people about what's going on in the state of Hawaii. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Leo. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one.